Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today at our orthopedic class on your new total hip or total knee joint replacement at Pioneers Medical Center and Colorado Advanced Orthopedics. My name is Christina Seneschal, and I am the occupational therapist here at Pioneers, and I will be presenting our class today for your um, joint replacement. So let's get started. We have a couple of objectives with this course. We wanna make sure that you feel ready to come and have your surgery with us. And this includes a lot of details, everything from um, learning who's going to be your, on your team for the joint replacement, what's new in joint replacement, and how to prepare for surgery, and how to prepare your home for surgery um, or, or following your surgery and what to expect during your hospitalization here, as well as the expectations for both physical and occupational therapies after your surgery to ensure that you can DC home. And finally, answer any questions you may have. I understand this is uh, digital, so you can't raise your hand and ask questions, but I will be giving you the contact information if you do have any questions afterwards. So here's our surgery team, Dr. Kevin Borchard, which you're all familiar with, uh, on our far left. And then in the middle is Russell Stagg. He will be doing the anesthesia for you uh, when you're here for surgery. And on the far right is Dr. Dan Ward. He is a specialist located in um, on the East Coast, and he is the doctor uh, Dr. Kevin Borchard did his fellowship training under. We fly him out for complex hip and knee revisions. Um, so you, there is a chance you may be seeing him, but most likely probably not. Here's our surgery team. Uh, upper left corner is Fran Schreiber Custer. She is physician assistant to Dr. Borchard. And then we have Terry Jorgensen on the upper right. Ashley Gates, registered nurse on the lower left and Heather Vaughn, registered nurse on the lower right. And your rehab team. There are three physical therapists that you may have the potential to meet during your stay with us. There's Krister Lundqvist on the upper left, Weston Wise, physical therapist in the middle, and new to our team is Ann Baker, physical therapist on the upper right, and yours truly down there at the bottom, myself, Christina Seneschal, occupational therapist. So total knee replacement, what is it? Well, it is just as it sounds, it's a replacement of the knee. Uh, there's also a partial knee replacement that some people are candidates for. The majority of people we see here are getting a full knee replacement. There is removal of the damaged bone, uh, which is causing the pain and um, difficulty with range of motion and weakness in your joint, that part is removed surgically and replaced with the new joint capsule there that you can see is the metal, shiny metal part, and then the uh, white nylon buffer in the middle uh, is the shock absorber. You can see a side view as well on the left showing where your kneecap will um, remain, but that will be cleaned up and, and modified if necessary by Dr. Borchard. Uh, good news for getting a brand new knee, you have no precautions if this is your first time replacement, which means you can get up and go right after surgery um, and with the assistance of physical and occupational therapy to ensure it's safe. But you can bend your knee, you can put full weight on it. There are absolutely no restrictions. The total hip replacement, you can see here, um, is um, a surgery which is similar to the knee in that the damaged and diseased portion of the bone and the joint are removed, surgically removed and replaced with a joint that works. Um, there are no precautions if this is your first time hip replacement. Um, if, you, if this is your first time hip replacement but you have had 
a history of lumbar spinal fusion, there will be precautions, which simply means that there are certain ways you can and cannot move your new hip in order to protect the integrity of the new um, arthroplasty. Um, and if this is your second time surgery, uh, or also known as a revision, there will be precautions similar to that of the lumbar spinal fusion precautions, certain ways that you can and cannot move your hip. And we will go over those in detail with you when you're here for your surgery in, while you're staying with us in the hospital. What's new in surgery? Today's surgeries are less invasive than surgeries of years past. The incisions are smaller, which means that there will be less tissue disruption um, and ultimately uh, it'll take less time to heal. Dr. Borchard uses the Mako robotic arm, which assists in precision alignment of your new joint. Um, not all doctors are using those. That is uh, specific to us here at Pioneers. You will be getting up and moving much sooner and using that joint as soon as your sensation and motor return um, is, is felt uh, below your waist. And also what's new, we put a large emphasis on knee extension. And these two pictures demonstrate what knee extension is. Your, your knee is fully opened. And your window for getting full knee extension is much shorter than getting knee flexion, the opposite of what we'll be working on. Um, you have about a two to three week window to get your knee in zero degrees, which is fully opened. And um, that is the primary, one of the primary stretches and exercises that we work on with you here. Um, and once you leave the hospital is, is working on getting that knee opened or fully extended. Preparing for surgery. Um, the correct contact numbers for you and your care person are going to be important, um, both before, during, and after your surgery. Um, so make sure that that information is uh, given to the RNs that we showed earlier, either Ashley or Heather, um, even Fran. Uh, we want to make sure that you have scheduled all of your pre-op appointments. There are a lot of pre-op appointments necessary, and those are specifically for ensuring you have the best outcomes possible. And that includes everything from your general lab work, x-rays, um, uh, dental examination, which also helps to prevent any kind of complications following surgery because of the bacteria in the mouth that can interfere with, with healing. Uh, and primary care physician clearance, as well as the final visit with the orthopedic surgeon or physician's assistant, which will be approximately two weeks prior to your surgery. Um, and make sure you have a complete list of all your medications and your supplements. This needs to be detailed. Uh, your dosage, time of day, uh, even over-the-counter supplements that you're taking because some of those supplements can interfere with um, other meds that you'll be given here. Further preparing for surgery, you'll be given at your pre-op appointment um, a product called chlorhexidine. That product is used three days prior to surgery and it's designed to thoroughly clean the skin, get rid of nasty bacteria that can be hiding deep in the pores. It will reduce your risk of getting an infection. Um, and the nurses will go over details how to use it. Um, uh, the other important part of this is to remember you're not allowed to put any additional soaps or lotions or oils on your hip area and legs for those three days prior to your surgery, as those can help trap nasty, harmful bacteria. Preparing for surgery includes obtaining the appropriate durable medical equipment for your home and if you're getting a knee or hip surgery, one thing you absolutely need to have is a front-wheeled walker. Those walkers are different from the four-wheeled walker because there's only wheels in the front versus at, at all points of contact. And this 
is much more stable for you once you get out of surgery. It'll be easier to learn how to walk and move your body using a front-wheeled walker, so please make sure you get one of those. There's also the tub transfer bench located on the lower right-hand corner of this slide. A tub transfer bench is designed to reduce your fall risk having to balance on one leg in order to get into your tub. Tub transfer bench, you sit on the outside of it and then swing your legs in one by one and slide over. It's a safer way to get in and out of the tub. Uh, definitely recommend a raised commode or also known as a bedside commode. These are adjustable in height and they go right over your toilet. Notice it has an armrest there, one for each side. This is super important for making sitting and standing from your toilet a whole lot easier, especially if you're getting um, a bilateral knee replacement or both of your knees. Uh, using your upper body and your, your arms for standing up will be really important those first few days as you um, come out of surgery and are working on gaining your strength back in your legs. Uh, the upper right hand picture is a raised commode seat that clamps directly onto the toilet. I'm not as big of a fan of those just because if you don't get the correct one to fit your specific toilet shape, they may not secure or latch on uh, perfectly, which risks it tipping if you put too much weight on one side versus the other when you go to stand up. So I, I do like the picture of the middle commode seat there. Uh, they're, they're just more safe. And the good news is with equipment is there's usually somebody out there who's got them so you can either get it for free or very reduced cost. If you're coming from Craig, the VFW there, um, uh, operated by Mary Walters, she has a, apparently quite the collection of durable medical equipment that you can borrow and return when you're done. Meeker, we have the VFW here. I know that the supplies have been you know, so kind of hit or miss. However, there's lots of locations where you can find this equipment for cheap or just next to nothing or free. And that includes maybe um, a relative who has gone through the surgery before and might have some of that equipment kicking around in their house. The v local VFW churches, senior centers are an excellent place uh, for this type of uh, equipment. And if you call your senior center, for example, Rifle I know has a, um, a, a program for $10 deposit, you can pick up an item, use it as long as you need, and then bring it back, you get your $10 back. So there's lots of options, but if you wanna just get a brand new one, uh, Amazon or walmart.com, you can probably find one at Walgreens. Call ahead of time, they usually don't have a ton in stock, but um, there's options for buying them brand new, and they run anywhere from $50 to $300, so make sure you're shopping around. Okay, preparing your home. This is a very important part of therapy because when you go home, you're gonna notice that basic things are a lot harder to do and setting up your environment to make things a little easier for you, basic things to do, will help you tremendously, but it also reduces your risk for fall. Uh, your risk for fall will be increased following surgery because you've got a brand new joint and your brain is learning what it's like to move on a joint that's no longer um, um, crooked, so to speak, or um, painful or has less movement and uh, flexion or extension. You're also going to be on pain meds, which likely will alter some of your mental processes just a little bit, it might not make you as sharp and um, you're gonna be using a new device, which you may or may not be familiar with, but that's also a risk factor for, for fall, as well as levels of pain fluctuating, being a little bit more tired, and your range of motion in your knee might be less than what it was before your surgery. So all of those things are factors that affect your, your risk for having a fall. So if we can get your environment set up appropriately before you get home, your risk factors can at least be uh, minimized in those uh, in the environmental areas. So let's take a look at what that means. 
Um, getting into your home is going to be one of the first challenges. Uh, most people have at least a few steps to get in to the main entrance. So looking at your current entrance now, what, how is it set up? It, is it a long, uneven walkway that it's going to require you to um, navigate with a walker to get to? Um, what are the condition of your stairs? Are they in poor repair? Do you have a railing? Do you not have a railing? Is it possible to put a railing up before your surgery? Railings are wonderful in any capacity. If you can get one installed before your return home, that would be great. I've included some options for railings. A lot of people just have one or two steps, and um, if that's the case, the picture on the lower right, there are some grab bars attached just outside of the door, which is sufficient railing just to give you some extra stability and balance for getting up that first step. So uh, railings are the name of the game there. Uh, bathroom, a very dangerous area in the house. With the addition of water on floors that are usually tile uh, or linoleum, that can increase the risk factor for having a fall. So how can we set it up to make it safer and easier for you to get around? Well, um, there's um, the commode seat that we spoke of earlier will definitely make toileting a whole lot easier, at least sitting and standing from the toilet. Showering, depending on your shower setup, tub showers can be a little tricky, but with the transfer bench that there was a picture earlier and, and also here on this slide, you can see it really reduces your, your fall risk just because you're seated the whole time to get in and out. Grab bars, once again, in the shower, always a wonderful addition to any bathroom, no matter what your age or whether or not you've had a joint replacement or not. And the picture on the, the lower right shows really the, the best positioning for grab bars in a, a shower. Um, right at about 32 to 36 inches is the height for grab bars placed horizontally. Um, if you do think that you're going to want to sit down for your first few showers when you're home, then in addition of a um, handheld shower head is always nice as well, so that way you're not being drowned by a faucet that's above your head that you have no control over while you're sitting. So uh, Walmart, I know, has a handheld shower head for $10. It's, it does the job. It's nothing fancy, but it certainly is a great temporary modification to your shower to make showering easier. Uh, Non-slip bath mats in and out of the tub are recommended. Bedrooms, <clears throat> excuse me, bedrooms really one of the more challenging things is being able to navigate in and around your bed with your walker. Uh, can be a tight fit for some bedrooms. Uh, looking at how you might be able to move your furniture to allow you to safely get to your bed with your walker so you're not tempted to ditch it on the side and uh, hold on to the bed or other furniture to, to get to where you're going to sleep. There is a picture here on the lower left of a bedside rail and they sell those on Amazon and I haven't seen any locally offered. Maybe Grand Junction, there's some stores down there that have them, but online you can get them for about $35. And if you're somebody that already has a hard time going from laying down flat to sitting up, might be a good addition for you to get one of those, but certainly not necessary. We'll make sure that you can safely get out of bed. Um, the picture in the middle is a motion activated nightlight a great way to reduce your fall risk for those midnight run to the bathroom. It'll automatically turn on for you, illuminate your settings so you can see where you're going. Um, get your, your bedroom as clean as you can. Remove objects that might be cluttering the areas where you would walk with a walker, especially around corners. And uh, if your clothing is located in a bottom drawer of a dresser or maybe deep in the back of the closet, a narrow walk-in closet, pulling your favorite items out and having them located right at the top of your bureau that's easily accessible can make getting dressed a lot uh, easy until you're able to fully and comfortably walk around without a walker. Uh, living rooms. I think the number one challenge for living rooms are what kind of surfaces you're going to be sitting on. And 
Uh, a lot of us have those nice, comfortable recliners. The only problem with those nice, comfortable recliners is they put our hips below our knees and it requires us to really <laughs> struggle to stand up. Um, after your surgery, if you're getting knees, your, your quad muscles, which are the, the strongest muscles in your legs that really help get your body upright, those muscles are gonna be weak. And so the lower the chair, the more challenging it is to stand up. So if you, um, Walmart does have some risers that I've seen, at least in the rifle Walmart, uh, they're underneath that couch picture on the far right. Those are about $10 for a package of four, 10 or $15. Um, the recliner risers and the other two pictures, I have not seen those offered locally in a store, so you may have to buy those online. Um, but there's also plenty of creative people out there who I've seen make platforms just using some two by fours to raise up their chair, probably another three to four inches. Um, so that's the biggest challenge with living rooms, but do a quick walk through your living room with a walker before you have your surgery so you can really see what it's gonna be like to navigate in and around, especially if you have a coffee table that's close to the couch or maybe it, it takes some maneuvering around um, various pieces of furniture to get where you sit. Um, just try it out before you come home with your walker. Kitchen and dining areas. Uh, probably the same situation here is looking to make sure your chair is a good height. And there's a picture on the lower left of a chair with armrests. If you don't have a dining room chair, kitchen chair with armrests, I would encourage you to get one. Um, uh, throw rugs are pretty common in living room, or excuse me, in um, kitchens and maybe even in your dining room. So rolling those up and removing them so that the back of your walker doesn't catch it as you're walking and then it just pulls the rug up and becomes a trip hazard. And preparing meals ahead of time is a really good idea because you're going to be a little too tired to want to make a nice full-blown meal. So having some items in the freezer ready to go or if you have Meals on Wheels in your area, seeing if you can sign up for that for a week or two and um, getting that prepared ahead of time. And your hospital stay, there's, oops, apologize, there's things to think about that you might not think about like for one, getting your uh, personal um, responsibilities in order, whether it's pets, children, or maybe you're a caregiver for an, an elderly relative. Uh, what, are, what are your plans for ensuring that all of those responsibilities are taken care of in case of worst case scenario, you're here for longer than expected? So having a plan for for all of those uh, responsibilities is very important. And uh, the harder tasks are gonna be getting around and in, in, out in the community after your surgery, especially grocery shopping. Um, and we do live in Colorado, it's winter time, so we're gonna have to deal with snow and ice. So do you have a friend or a loved one that can do your grocery shopping, pick up prescriptions, maybe even help you with some house cleaning and laundry, because those two tasks are also very challenging. Oh, uh, and uh, the last thing here is one of my favorites is if you're a person who has a hard time putting your personal projects on hold, uh, you might want to try to get those things done before your surgery. Uh, we really don't want you out there putting the shingle on the roof when you get home one or two weeks out from your surgery. So get your projects done. Um, and, uh, and, and that'll just make sure you're you can be safe in the long run. Okay, so the big days here. What should you bring for your surgery? Number one, most definitely, bring your two-wheeled walker. Bring that with you. Uh, the therapists here, we are going to work extensively with you using that device, and you will absolutely need it. Uh, if you have a CPAP machine that, or a BiPAP machine that you use at night, make sure you bring that with you. Clothing. Wear something that's comfortable. Usually the best stuff is gonna be sweatpants or yoga pants, not yoga pants, a little too tight, but something stretchy, uh, something that's very comfortable. 
wouldn't recommend jeans, however, if that's what you want to wear. As the occupational therapist, I'll make sure you can get into them independently. Uh, sweatshirt, robe, nightgowns, um, new or newer shoes with good support. If you have a pair of shoes that you've used for years, they're pretty well broken in, and now you've got a brand new joint, which is going to change how you move your body, and wearing shoes that were designed or, or um, worn in based on how you were moving prior to your surgery, that's not a good idea. Start off fresh. Uh, break in a new pair of shoes with your new, new joint. And um, if you have a special pillow or neck roll, blankets, bring that. Bring your usual hygiene items, toothbrush, toothpaste, soaps. There won't be a whole lot of downtime, but there will be some. We have cable TV, we have Wi-Fi, so bring stuff to keep you busy while you're here, even though it, it'll be a short time. Um, when you come for your surgery, check into the very front door. Uh, there's a picture in the background here of our hospital, so you can see exactly where you'll, you'll come in. And you're going to complete the COVID-19 screen at the front and they'll take your temperature and ask you um, a lot of questions related to symptoms that you may or may not have. And your guest, your care person will also have to answer those questions as well. So don't be surprised. You'll also register with uh, the registration department. And then you'll be met by one of the surgical uh, nurses. They'll come out to get you and you bring you back to the uh, pre-surgery area. Your care person, may not accompany you to the surgery area. Uh, rules have changed with COVID, so um, just know that. And your support person may wait in the hospital lobby or they can, Meeker has some things to do while they wait, um, but otherwise they can wait here and then they'll be called when your surgery is complete and um, let you know how things are going and when they intend to bring you down to the hospital where you'll stay overnight. And that's when your care person can come with you and um, the surgical, surgical team will come out and get you and bring you down to where your room will be and, and your care person. All right, let's see. So waking up from surgery is a very busy time. You're going to have a lot of people checking in on you. You'll notice there's a whole lot of stuff going on on your body, everything from new bandages on your incision sites to use of a compression garment known as the TED hose. Those go up to your thighs. And then sequential compression device, SCDs. Those are wrapped around your calves and those are designed to help reduce your risk of getting a blood clot. Uh, there'll be ice packs on your surgical area. You'll most likely have two IVs, probably one in each arm. Uh, there may or may not be a Foley catheter. So for people who have both knees done at the same time, usually there will be a catheter present because it's going to take you a while to get up and use the bathroom. Uh, and most everybody comes out wearing oxygen, but you might not need it. However, don't be surprised if it's there. Uh, here's a picture of what the TED compression hose look like. They are uh, very tight stockings designed to prevent blood clots as well as the SCDs those are the that's the device on the right hand side those are as well to prevent blood clots and respiratory therapy is one of the people that you will meet on your stay with us here they'll be assessing you pretty quickly for what you'll need for oxygen and uh, introducing you to use of the incentive spirometer, which is that plastic tool on the lower right-hand corner. And they're gonna start you on breathing treatments if, if necessary and um, address your respiratory needs. Eating is a slower process just because we wanna make sure that you're not having any um, adverse reaction to the anesthesia, some people can get nauseous uh, following waking up from surgery. So basically we just introduce you to small liquids, uh, a little bit of ice chips, clear liquids, and 15 minutes later if you're doing okay and you're not feeling nausea, then move on to something a little more heavy, jello, crackers, 
And um, if, if that's going okay, then after 15 minutes or so, you can move on to a, to a delicious meal from our cafeteria here. The hamburgers are pretty good. Pain management, a very important topic and it will be, what's your pain will be the most common question you'll hear. There's a lot of ways to measure and rate your own level of pain. One person's level five might not be another person's level five. I, as the OT, I tend to use more concrete uh, ways of measuring pain. Mild, moderate, or severe is my favorite way to measure it. And you can see the scale here. It shows down at the bottom. Moderate is going to be between four and six, and mild is one to, one to three, and severe is seven to ten. Uh, you can also use the face, the picture of the face up there at the top to help describe your level of pain or discomfort. And that's important because when you first come out of surgery, your pain, you're, you're not going to have any pain. You're, you're going to be, uh, there's still a nerve block in there that is preventing your brain from feeling substantial pain. But once that starts to wear off, the, the pain can creep up on you quite quickly. So as soon as you start to feel like your pain is approaching a moderate level or is already at the moderate level, you need to call for your nurse and let them know because it's time to get some pain meds on board to help manage that pain. We don't want you getting to a severe level of pain because then we're going to be or you're going to be dealing with um, waiting for the pain meds to kick in to get you down to a, a more manageable level. There are other ways of managing your pain in addition to medication, positioning and movement. A lot of people find that just getting up and putting some weight on that new joint can really help reduce the level of pain. Uh, moving and walking, increasing the blood flow, uh, getting some of the swelling out to reduce the stiffness, that's all a very um, important way of managing your pain. And then good old-fashioned ice. We, we will be sending you home with an ice pack and we will be putting fresh ice packs on you whenever you call for it. Um, they last about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, so feel free to ring your, your buzzer in your room to let us know and we'll put fresh ice packs on. Here we are, PT and OT evaluations. Uh, those, you will be seeing physical therapy and occupational therapy the same day of your surgery, if possible. A lot of people who come out later in the day don't have enough uh, return yet in their lower extremities to, to be able to tolerate standing, but we can at least get you up at the edge of the bed if you're feeling up to it to just to try to start to get the blood moving and get you moving. Because the sooner you move, the, the better your outcomes are for a, a better rehab experience. And uh, the, the walking will definitely happen if you have sensation and motor control, then we want to get you up and get you walking so you can try out your new joint. The goals for rehab here in the hospital are important because these are the goals that are going to make sure that we can get you home. And we as therapists are looking to make sure that you can effectively manage your own pain and swelling. I know there's only so much you can do with, with going and getting ice packs while you're in a hospital, but you can certainly call for them. We want you to be able to demonstrate a level of moderate pain, no, no more than moderate while you're here. And uh, demonstrate independence with getting in and out of bed, getting up and down from sitting positions, no matter where, where that sitting position is, whether it's the toilet, the recliner, the bed, the couch, you need to be able to do that on your own and safely. Walking and climbing stairs, physical therapy will be working to make sure that you master that task before you go home. Dressing, toileting, and showers are all occupational therapy specialties, making sure that you are safe doing those new tasks and uh, also independent. A lot of people have caregivers at home. Even still, if you do have a caregiver, we want you to be doing your dressing and toileting and showering because that means that you are engaging the muscles around your new joint and you're using them. Um, I also have a lot of adaptive equipment that if 
access to your lower extremities is really hard for a variety of reasons, reduced range of motion, swelling, pain. Um, I have tools to teach you how to dress yourself using these tools so you can still be independent. Driving is a no-no as long as you're under the, um, the use of narcotic or prescribed pain medication. Most people are off that pain medication by two to three weeks. We also need to make sure that you can um, safely move your leg that operates the brake and the gas pedal. So that's gonna be strength and range of motion. And you and your physical therapist can, can make sure the timing is right for that. But typically two to three weeks before you can return to driving. And uh, getting back to showering, you can do that. Day number one after your surgery, there is a large dressing over your surgical site called an aqua cell. And it's a, it's a probably, an, I don't even, maybe an eighth of an inch thick, it's a rubber. And it's water resistant for showers. You're not allowed to soak. So no Glenwood hot springs, no hot tubs, bathtubs, swimming, um, just showering for the first six weeks. And we want you home. Home is where the heart is and home is where the healing happens. There's also a lot less germy bacteria in your own home. It's, um, it's going to be less risk for infection at your own home. Plus, you get a lot more opportunity to get up and move, walk, do, and try out your new joint. Use it in a functional capacity. So. We want you home the next day, if possible. We're certainly not going to send you home if you're not safe, if you were not able to demonstrate the ability to um, complete those rehab goals, which is sitting and standing and moving and dressing and showering. We're not gonna send you home unless you're ready, uh, demonstrated, but also we wanna make sure you feel ready. So um, so we, it's, it's, most people are out of here, the, within 24 hours following the surgery. Uh, if, if you are an exception to that, that's okay. Um, we'll make sure that you, you get home sooner rather than later. Outpatient physical therapy for uh, knee replacements are, um, we, we wanna make sure that you have your outpatient physical therapy scheduled for no more than one to two days after you get home. And uh, rehab's very important for those knee joints. So, Whoever you'll be using for your physical therapy, just get that appointment scheduled for uh, one to two days after you return home. Um, let's see. And if you're using us here at Pioneers for, for therapy, we'll make sure that you have all of your appointments scheduled before you leave. Um, and let's see, uh, total knees are the only, really the only joint that needs physical therapy, um, unless Dr. Borchard indicates maybe uh, certain hip replacements might need some, some therapy. Um, he'll let you know. Airports and travel. Uh, most airports now don't have the, uh, the old um, metal detectors. It's more of a body scanning system. However, if you are at an airport with a metal detector, just let them know ahead of time that you have a joint replacement and um, they can do a pat down or wave the wand over you. So um, traveling really isn't a challenge. And that leads us to questions. I'm, I'm hoping we answered all of your questions. However, there I'm sure are many more. If you do have them, no problem. Please reach out to us here at Pioneers Medical Center. Um, or Colorado Advanced Orthopedics, that is the number right there for Colorado Advanced Orthopedics, 970-878-9752. And thank you for joining with me today. I hope you learned uh, everything and you feel a little bit more comfortable and confident about your upcoming surgery. Um, we look forward to seeing you. Thanks so much.